Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Comrade Detective Season 1 Episode 4, it's called Two Films for One Ticket, full spoilers for the episode as always. You know the last episode I said, Joseph will wake up in about 10 minutes into the next one? Yeah. I happened to check the time <laughs> when he opened 10 his minutes. eyes, it was pretty much on 10 minutes. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you know, I don't mind that it was predictable because... I think this was the best episode yet. No, no like I think predictability is part of the charm because it's doing all these old tropes. I yeah. just, it's just amusing that I was actually that, that dead on, that yeah. dead on. Yeah, because because at the start of the episode, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be able to sleep all episode. Maybe I'll wake up at the end. Maybe we'll we'll get an episode where, you know, Gregor's on his own for doing stuff in like it'll be a big thing. At maybe the end. if we'd had more episodes. Yeah, maybe, maybe just six. But uh, yeah, so we start with this this flashback slash dream sequence it's kind of, kind of him dreaming the flashback essentially you know, and Yosef said and we've heard about him and him and Nikita going to the US as kids you know in the past and we, we have this flashback of them in the hotel room and uh, one of their fathers or uncles or whatever saying no 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 you, you stay in the room you know, he's taking the TV out there's a TV in the hotel room and he's taking it out so they can't watch propaganda and the bible and the bible yes 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 and but as soon as he leaves, Nikita's like, right, let's blow this joint, let's go do stuff. Yeah. Um, and Yosef is always, oh, I don't know, he was, he's a good two-shoes, like, he's, he's listening to the adults. It's, it's, this is a lending credence to your idea that Nikita might have might not be dead after all. Yes, yes, I can see that, I can see some potential, I can see that being the big the big twist, but he goes outside and it treats it like this her like every single person that he like walks past is winking at him. Whether they're a prostitute, someone who works at a hotel, they all wink at him like they want to molest them. Like that's yeah. kind of the, the vibe you get. And then he goes out and he someone tries to mug him for his shoes. Yeah. Even though he's an adult and the shoes probably won't fit him. And you know, then a cop comes up and shoots the the bad guy and it's like, Yeah, welcome to New York kid And then walks off. And this, this all happens in the space of about thirty seconds. It's this, yeah. it's again, it's this, it's kind of the. We keep here talking about how this is like propaganda putting down the West, but this was like, how do they actually show the West? Yeah, it's like look how terrifying it is. Yeah, that's, that's just how bad. This is, this is a, just a morning in New York. Yeah, it's like when they're in the room and the coach, some, uh, or, or it might be just after when they when they want to go out. And it's like, oh, it's the the rape capital of the world and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I like it was murder, rape, and there was maybe, something maybe else. Kidnapping. Maybe kidnapping. Yeah, it was. It was like the, the three big things. And yeah, uh, but we see that he's still dreaming. And then it, you know, afterwards, his wife even says, "Oh, he still it haunts his dreams." That trip to New York, he had, like everything. Yeah. Which sets off Gregor uh, on a on a mission. He's like, "All right, I need to think like an American. I need to catch this this guy." So he goes to the library and we get a, a, a research montage of him looking through American history. It's just everything bad that's ever happened in the US. None of which is made up, to be fair. It's all real real things. Yeah. Maybe some a little twists on it. Because <laughs> it's this really funny montage because it's doing all this stuff. And it's because that classic cop thing where it's like fading all the images into the and like you know, the moving past and yeah. all the rest of it. And then it cuts to the the, the you know the police station and he's like giving he's like doing doing this sort of the lowdown for all the others like okay right so here's what we know I have to think like a capitalist I have to think like an American and he's going through all this history um, and just simple little things like you said talking about the, the founding fathers being like yeah these were a rich man who didn't want to pay their taxes and like it's, it's all, all these little touches that he's it, just, not wrong uh, uh, sure sure but like it's just it just again it's tying into this whole idea that it's yeah it's looking at it but through I, this lens. I think that's why why it's so enjoyable because. While everything they're saying, you're going, yeah, this is you know twisted as propaganda, but technically, a lot of it is true. Yeah. If, if you if you just look at the raw facts of it, like 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 all that stuff that you was in that montage, that's you know all this awful stuff. Yeah, a lot of that happened. <laughs> oh no, sure, yeah, but look, then there's things like music is just uh, subliminal messaging to make everyone <laughs> a whore. Like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, like... there's some there's some stuff that's not that accurate. Yeah, that's, that's. I mean, some people might choose to believe that statement, <laughs> but like that's the, so there's things things on either side. But um, 
Yeah. This is actually Yosef makes his return. During this, we get like a wake up scene, but then he like he's like, oh, say, so where's a Ronald Reagan mask? Who is Ronald Reagan? And like, oh, it's the president. And there's this and there's that. He was a governor as well. It's like, oh, that's his job, but who is he? And that's when we get the, the classic cop moment where we just hear he's an actor and the camera just goes across and Yosef's standing there. He's alive. And Gregor, this is where like, the, the, the homoerotic sexual tension really starts to come into the, the, the fray, I think. The, the yeah. way Gregor looks back at him. Uh, which, again, it's playing with those kind of tropes. Like, you can't, I mean, it's not a cop it's, movie. It's a staple of the genre, isn't it? But you can't not watch Rocky Three and not feel a little bit of, you know, Apollo and Rocky Kane. Maybe, maybe Kane and Wanted Bone, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just, just it's there, is all I'm saying. Uh, so... That that combined with uh, like looking for this film with the, the chili they're at, yeah. it takes them to a, a, a movie theater and they, they go in to watch uh, Battleship. Port- I can't say the last word. I've never been able to say it. And I'll be honest, when when they said it in the dialogue, it, it kind of it was like this what weird days where I, like I heard the start of the word and I'm not really sure how to finish the word. <laughs> Something about it just didn't compute. It's just your brain cannot comprehend that word. Part of me really wants to say Pokemon, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't even like Pokemon. I hate Pokemon. I despise Pokemon. Look, I'm pretty sure that's not accurate. Of course it's not accurate. <laughs> well, do you think I'm suggesting it seriously? I just can't quite tell with your brain. But, yeah, so they go in, like, oh, great film, and then it, like, you know, it, another film you goes on. And it's this <laughs> this American propaganda, um, and all, all it really is is like a bad soap opera esque, where or actually it's more like a bad porno, where, where the, the woman comes in and they get the guys like like, like she, she's there to and she's like, oh you've got money, and it's like oh what else we're we gonna do all weekend? And she's like oh I can think of a few things. And takes off the glasses, and the entire time they're sitting there going this is disgusting. Oh, oh yeah, what the this hell is this? Oh they're, they're, they're just outraged. So they got to projectionist and beat him up. Um, and apparently Yosef, his, his experience of almost dying has made him a little bit more hardcore because he, he, he cuts one of the guy's arteries. Yeah, uh, the guy's like, oh, I see what this is, good cop, bad cop, thinking that he's yeah. been the, the good cop after Gregor. Yeah, reasonable assumption. But that upsets him, clearly. Yeah. Because he's like, no, no, I'm very, very bad cop because <laughs> now you're bleeding out. Maybe the the, the, get, the better cop here will, uh, you know, get, get patch you up here so you, so you won't die and bleed out. <laughs> But uh, no, nah, so it gives them, but it all leads to uh, th- this thing operation where he talks about this filmmaker uh, Peter, uh, who who makes these films, but he also is a smuggler and he, he lives in this big fancy mansion, and uh, so they take him in and they uh, they talk to all the other cops. They agree to do this big sting operation where they're going to go in pretending to be smugglers of soft drinks. Uh, Why not? Which of course leads to the whole thing where they they, they take out the samples. You know, it's, it's like a drug scene in another movie where they're taking out cocaine, but he takes yeah. out a can of Pepsi. He's like, "Oh, can I have a taste?" And he like takes it, and he starts like freaking out, and he's like, "Oh, that's the stuff." Oh, yeah. Oh, the the image of this guy. It's it's over the top Western decadence. Is, is the only way you can describe it. Is, is is what this is. Yeah, he's a he's a fat guy with a, a tennis like headband on. Like it's, it's well, kinda... he's wearing a whole tennis outfit, isn't he? Yeah, white top, white shorts. Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's the tennis band. Like that's the part that makes me feel eighties though. Like, people still wear tennis outfits for go to tennis, but the tennis band headband in particular, unless yeah, you're a no, professional you're right. tennis player, <laughs> feels Just... like the super most eighties thing I can possibly think of. I'd never considered it, but yeah, you're right. It just is. It, it really is. You get that sense that there's some corruption going on because the apparently the file on this guy disappeared and like uh, the the ginger little shit character even like like you know yeah. quips a line about it to to the guy from this this part of the bureau and he's like oh, what did you say and you know the captain has to step in but they, they go to this thing operation they go on they snuggle the Pepsi and. You feel like something's up because he gets like so. There's all these like girls around who are probably prostitutes from the sounds of it, and one of them takes Yosef as oh go and go and meet the, the, the you know the, the girl of the cheerleader from the video. Yeah, the actress. She, she's here apparently, and she's yeah. going to take Yosef up. Well, well, Peter takes Gregor off to do something else, and uh, it ends up tall. yeah, it ends up in this uh, weird thing where like Yosef tries to actually help the woman, like because she's like, hey, do you want to be here? Do you want to be doing this? Is someone looking for you? You know, kind of like she's a, he's, he's found her a brothel kind of idea. So, oh, like, you get family looking for you? Okay, I can help you. He's like, you know, being the hero cop. Uh, then they get to her room and she takes off her clothes and he's, you know, he's like, what, what are you doing? No, 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 I'm a married man. Like, stop, put your clothes back on. Um, 
but then he he passes out because he gets drugged. And yeah. I mean, he's not completely unconscious. He's, he's sort of he's kind of aware of what's going on, but he's he's on help. Can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And she gets on top of him. Doesn't even take off his clothes. Just sort of makes the movements, as it were, simulates sex. As yeah. a camera crew comes into the room, and I'm like, okay, I, I guess they know who he is, and he, they want to send something to his wife. Like yeah, that. that's what I thought as well. That was my first inclination. I don't think that anymore, given where the episode ends and what they actually do. But same. Um, but that's what it felt like at the time. At this point, after what it ends like, though, I feel like it's probably just like Peter's weird directing thing. Like he wants to make some sort of weird movie. It, it may well be. I, I don't know, because uh, we were warned he's into some sick shit. Um, mm. So, so that's going on. Meanwhile, you can tell that Peter's probably ending things. He knows who they are, and he's because he, he's questioning Gregor, and it's, it's under that pretense of like, oh, it's pretending to be friendly, but you know that he's yeah, yeah, there's brewing the here. There. And uh, he ends up stabbing, <laughs> stabbing. Uh, was it Ronzo or something like that? The guy's name was Orson. Orson, there you go. Uh, who who brought them here? He's like, yeah, you know, you're a projectionist, but you're a really bad liar. And then he stabs him. And then a Romanian cover of, of what uh, a feeling. Uh, yeah, yeah, from uh, Flashdance. And it is, it is beautiful. It is glorious. Uh, it is. It's equally the most inappropriate song to play at this moment, as well as being the most appropriate song to play at this moment. And I'm not yeah. sure what it is. This this whole sequence now, set to this song, might be the greatest moment of the show yet. It is... It both works 100% and doesn't work at all. Yes. It does both things at the same time, which I love is very it. impressive. Um, and we get this, you know cheesy shootout where he's like shooting bad guys left and right and my favourite part's when they shoot the guy the stairs and he comes rolling down the stairs uh, but he eventually gets to Yosef and you know frees him and shoots the other guys in the room and whatnot. Uh, and then we you know we cut to later and uh, actually no, that's not, that's not cut to later quite yet because um, they run out and then like you know Peter comes running after them and uh, Gregor's gun's empty and you know Peter thinks he's got it won, but then another cop, you know, because they, they've they've all been waiting. They, they're waiting down the street, waiting for a, a queue, which is making me think that this corrupt guy's intentionally holding them back, whilst this ambush, you know, comes in to happen. But they show up just at this last second to to save them. Uh, so Captain's pissed. He 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 was assured that this would be an easy operation with no no casualties, yeah. and instead he's got a mansion full of dead bodies because Gregor <laughs> was playing Terminator, and. It was fun. I don't blame him. So, but it leads to the sort of the next morning, right? They, they both they go home. Next morning, they both wake up and they're both framed. And I love this. And I'll tell you why I love this. I love this because, yeah, what's the one cliche that we have to do in this A's cop show? They eventually have to get their badges taken away and they have to do it outside the law. That's this is the. True. It's the number one trope. So as soon as like you know, Yosef wakes up and the son's like, "Oh, you told me, Dad, to always, uh, you know, turn people in. You know, be a you know where it's going straight away." Yeah, and the captain comes in and he's you know, there's, there's Nike shoes all over the place and Monopoly boards and all these other things. There's so much stuff. All these sports jackets. Yeah, and he's been taken off. And I love how the captain even has, "Oh, you is a good son." Although I'm not sure about this one. And he points to the daughter, <laughs> so he can tell she's got a curiosity about the jeans and yeah. the music and whatnot. Um. So he's taken away, and then the captain goes to see see Gregor, and you're thinking, all right, okay, so he's going to see Gregor, and Gregor's maybe going to break him out, and that's how they're going to be outside the law. They're going to work together because, you know, that's, yeah. that's it up. I think that's it. You expect, like, oh, right, one of them's framed, but it goes one further and does the double. Yeah, because then it's like, oh, who's that girl on the bed? He's like, I don't know. I don't remember her. And it's, it's the actress. It's the cheerleader uh, from the film. And the captain, and it's almost comical, intentionally so, just how quickly the captain just, oh, yeah, no, yeah, hands up. I found you guilty. <laughs> just, just like before when you know Gregor was going. No, I don't believe that Yosef's guilty of being a traitor. I don't believe it for a sec. He's like, no, nope, he had his all filled. Just yeah, but to be fair on this one, he did just find a woman with a throat slashed on his bed. Okay, sure, but he's known him his entire life and knows what kind of copy is. I think at the very least, I mean, sure, he would still take him in because he'd have to go through the process, but. I just get that he immediately believes that you're guilty of this instead. Oh of, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. But I think in 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 a in a sense, him just going, right, you know, gun out. Let's let's do this. Arrest is probably what he should be doing anyway. 
Yeah, but that's not, how, do... that's not how he phrases it, though. If he just said, look, you know, I need to take you in and go through the process, that'd be fine, because that'd be like this respect where, look, I, I kind of believe you, but we have to go through this this thing. Yeah. I have to check you properly. Instead, it's like, oh, no, I've caught you right-handed. You're guilty, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, like I said, I think this one's more believable than, than Yosef's. Uh, sure. Oh, I actually think they're both completely unbelievable because they both happen. Like, when, when he oh, finds right, the body, yeah. I immediately went... Well, what you don't know? It's suspicious that both detectives on the same case both get some big crime incriminating the evidence night. at the exact yeah. same morning. Like, come on now! Like, think about this. Which, by the way, reminds me: uh, James Brown, the Ronald Reagan killer, uh, was was briefly seen in the the uh, well, the rape scene, we'll call it. Uh, yeah. Which I mean, he wasn't actually being raped. He was just. It was just. She was just flailing around on top of him, basically. But, right, that's what I thought. But then he said he was. Yeah, that's how he phrased it. Um, and I, it was kind of darkly humorous how the captain just kind of dismissed it. Like, what? Yeah, I'm just going to go past that and ignore that statement. And yeah. just he kept going on. Like, it was kind of disturbing how he, he just ignored it. Um, but, like, yeah, so, like, so A, that was creepy. And B, yeah, they've both been framed at the exact same time. That is, yeah, totally not suspicious at all. Yeah. But it was making me laugh. Like it, it works for the plot. It works for the show that he's just in, he's just believing this no matter what. Right. Um, exactly. So obviously, what made, would make this more believable is the captain's evil. And he's in Which on I it. said early on. But although honestly, I don't think he is. I actually think this is funnier if he's not. You, you think he's just being a, a, a really good communist, <laughs> or a really bad communist, depending on how you look at it. But <laughs> I, um, like, because I'm kind of on the side now that Nikita's alive. He's the evil guy. Uh, maybe the captain's yeah. in on it, but I think Nikita is the the true villain. I feel like after the opening of this one, mm. I feel like that that was kind of pointing at it. But yeah, now we get to get have the detectives somehow break out of uh, custody and do things outside the law. This is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. I'm really enjoying this show. So that has been episode four. Let us know what you think of the, the episode in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates. Head over to patreon.com slash mailfudgetv if you want to support the channel and everything we do here. Uh, but otherwise, guys, that is us. So thank you very much once again for watching. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>